What is Bellright and is it for you? Let's find out. Bellright is an open world survival RPG settlement builder. Not a settlement builder where you look down on a map of little players, but that you're actually living immersed in the world with. It's single player and co-op to four people with no PVP. It's similar to Medieval Dynasty in some ways, but with some clear distinctions, including the significant difference that Bellright is definitely a medieval combat game where Medieval Dynasty seems lacking in the combat part. I recently had the privilege of participating in a closed beta test where I racked up 32 hours of gameplay over a few days. So, story. Without giving it all away, basically, in a medieval world years ago, you were wrongly accused of killing a royal and fled for your life. Now you've returned to your homeland of Carvinia, a stranger, to find the realm in disarray under the rule of vicious leadership. This is where your journey begins. Establish and grow your own village, help others and recruit them to your cause, command your army and fight in epic battles. It is your mission in life to free the villages and rally troops to your side to take down the evil queen and forge a better kingdom for all. Although this is a serious storyline, Bellwright sprinkles humor throughout the interactions that you have through the world which I think brings a good balance and a lighthearted touch. Survival and Exploration Like many open world survival games, it will be up to you to find the resources, secrets, and skills that you need to survive as you journey through the expansive feudal world of Bellright. However, the people consider you an outsider and you have to earn their trust before they're willing to help you. You will need to hunt and gather, craft and build. It also integrates the RPG elements through the storyline conversations, and quests that you encounter along the way. However, leading a rebellion against the crown and dealing with bandits trying to get in your way is a monumental task, and you can't do it alone. This is where Bell Wright diverges from some of the typical survival games, because even if playing solo, you are not alone. Helpers Bell Wright is about liberating villages and freeing the people. It's only right that they work and fight alongside you. One of the first things I noticed when entering the first village is that there are people everywhere. This does not feel like an empty world at all. You'll meet the village elder and begin working toward developing relationships. As you gain renown in the area, more and more villagers will come to trust you, and as they do, you can recruit them to your cause and have them come live and work in your settlement. They each have an overall profession, such as worker, soldier, or guard, and you can change their profession at any time as needed if your situation changes. Your village helpers are one of the biggest, if not the biggest strength I see in Bellright. The amount of tasks that they can do, the autonomy that they do them with. I've seen them take care of something that I needed done without me even asking them to. Like adding more wood to the fire so that the food finishes cooking or finding their own food when I've run out. The amount of specification that you can assign to your helpers for a certain role or for performing certain tasks is impressive with a progressive priority scale. Having a friend with you as you explore the world is also helpful in many ways. Not only will they help fight mobs you happen across, but they give you extra storage space. When you're both filled up, you can tell them to take it all home, put it in storage, and when you see you've they've done that, you can ask them to come back to you. Skills. Of course, you will have skills that you can build up to be more effective, such as construction, combat, woodcutting, crafting, farming, how fast you run, etc. You can do this either by performing those skills or by reading books to learn skills, but so can your villagers. Each individual has their own abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. And we'll see when we get to community management how this can really be put to use on a large scale. Building. Building a bell right is about building a village, a community, and an army. The physical builds are created by obtaining a blueprint for them from a research desk. You assign your helper which blueprint you want to learn from a tech tree, and then they learn the blueprint for you. Once you have a blueprint, you can place down a hologram of that item or building. This allows you to plan out spaces before you even have the materials on hand to build them. With the blueprint placed, you can add the materials and build the object or 
here comes the fun part. You can just place the blueprint down and go work on something else and your villagers will gather the needed resources and build it for you. The way that the builds get constructed is designed in a way to keep you immersed in the medieval world. Once you have building materials, you walk around and place them. So it's kind of like seeing the building actually being constructed from the ground up. Although there are workstations, they are not necessary to be able to build in an area. There's no radius of where you can build. You can build anywhere. In fact, you're encouraged to have multiple locations as some areas will have more of one type of resource than another and you can have workers at different sites working on their own tasks and then delivering items to where you need them. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Crafting. Crafting can be accomplished by yourself or assigned to villagers. For example, if one of your villagers has a high weaving skill, then you can assign that person to be in charge of creating higher level armor or carrying bags and get it done more quickly than you. You can also queue up which items you want to be built and change what order they are completed in if you change your mind. If you're crafting an item yourself, you do need to stay in the workstation for it to complete or crafting will pause. But if you assign it to the village, then obviously you just go on your merry way. Crafting will include making items such as tools, weapons, armor, and also food. You're not only crafting items for yourself, but also for your villagers as you want them to level up as well. Crafting of items also does not have to be done on a one-off basis. You can choose to make one axe, but also if you plan to be bringing more villagers in and you want everyone to have, for example, an axe, then you can choose to top off the number of axes that you want to keep on hand or the number of arrows you want on hand in the settlement in case you get raided. Then your helpers will continue gathering necessary resources, crafting the number of items that you requested stay on hand for the village, and placing them in storage. By the way, you can also assign which type of items you want placed in which storage crates. At one point, I changed my mind about how I wanted things organized, but instead of going and moving everything, I just switched the setting on the crate for what was supposed to be stored there, and my workers came and started moving everything around for me. It was fabulous. So you can go to a workbench and choose the side for yourself to craft something, or you can go to the other side of the workbench where you manage things and put in an order for what you want made through automation of the village. As you progress through the tech tree and get access to more advanced items to craft, you will find that some require a certain crafting level skill in order to be crafted. If your skill isn't high enough, then you can find and recruit a villager to craft those items for you. Food. Food is very important. Food is required for survival, right? Mm, not exactly. Belrite doesn't have a food system that requires you to constantly eat or else you will die from just standing there. However, Food will give you additional buffs to your level of health and stamina. In addition, you must have food for your villagers. If your villagers are starving, then finding food will become their first priority and they will stop working on whatever they have and go to look for food. This cracked me up the first time it happened, but I can't really blame them. I would too. <laughs> so maintaining a supply of food is necessary to keep the village running smoothly. Fortunately, they will pitch in to help with this task, and you could even assign someone to specifically be in charge of hunting or cooking or farming. The food system is something that they recently reworked so that it would have more of an effect than just a timer ticking down, but they plan to have more positive and negative effects for the supply or lack of food in the future as well. Community management. So you're probably getting the idea by now that village management will be a key to your success, or at least speed, in beating back the bandits and taking on the crown. Bellwright gives you a lot of freedom in how you want your village to run and what balance or priority you want to assign tasks with a ranking system for each type of task. You can not only choose how high or low you want an individual's priority to be for every task that they can do, but you can also assign priority to what you want done in different types of workstations of the village overall. For example, 
If winter is coming and you want to prepare, you can look at your settlement and change the priority of the foraging camp overall to be priority one to send all the workers to grab all those flax before they disappear in the winter. Oh yeah, there are seasons. It's pretty cool. Or if you get a notice that a raid is coming tomorrow and you want everyone to help build fences today, you can make the logging camp to collect the wood the first priority so people will go and help with that. And you don't have to actually walk over to each person or work area in order to manage them. You can pull up the settlement tab, see what you have on hand in the village overall, and make adjustments to priorities from wherever you are. This is especially useful when you're managing not only your primary base, but also outposts that you have spread across the map. So you may have a mining camp set up in the mountains, designated as its own village, and you can schedule deliveries to be made between outposts in your hometown. You're able to have at least six separate outposts, maybe more. By the way, there is a way to create a fast travel for yourself between outposts, but it does come at a price. More on that in upcoming guides. Combat. Combat in Bellright is described as directional combat, meaning that you can choose where your attacks will land on the enemy. If you move your mouse from the left, then you attack from the left. If you move your mouse from the top, then you attack from the top or block, etc. Placement of your feet and distance from the enemy will also impact your success. So it's more involved and customizable than a system where you simply have to get parry timing right and click the mouse button over and over. There were some challenges during the playtest with NPCs not always reacting appropriately, such as a bandit not noticing that an arrow just whizzed by his head. And this is an area where they are definitely refining more before early access. Raids. At certain points, your village will get raided by bandits. You get a heads up that this is coming the next day, so you can prepare. There's also a bar that you can watch, which signifies how high your raid threat level is. The more wealthy your village becomes, or the more that you tick off bandits by killing them to gain renown, the faster you're likely to get a raid. You do want to try and defend against these raids, not only to gain the renown to recruit more villagers, but also because if the raiders win, they will steal some of your stuff and damage buildings that you'll have to repair and raids will become more difficult as you progress through the game. When a raid is coming, you can call your people to arms. A very interesting mechanic in Bellright is that when this happens, you don't have to quickly check everyone to make sure that they're armed and ready. You can call a group to arms from their work, and then if you have an armory set up with weapons that they've been stockpiling, they will individually go and grab a weapon that they're most proficient in and get ready to fight. This is quite unique from what I've seen and makes the entire process much more seamless and immersive. Army Command Of course, there's also combat in terms of leading squads of fighters in your eventual army. You can look at your army tab, create one or more squads, and assign people to them. When you feel brave enough, then you can take this squad out with you to attack nearby bandit camps or royal settlements. You'll be able to see on the map where these camps are and what level of difficulty they are. When entering battle, you can run in with the troops or you can give squad commands such as to charge and tell them where to go to attack while you stay out of the fray. Eventually, you'll lead your troops in the liberation of entire villages. By the way, another really helpful use for the squad mechanic, not related to combat, is to have a helper with you in general, and if you see a resource you want, you can point it out to the helper and have them go and get that specific one, whether it's picking up iron or cutting down trees. Combat is something that Donkey Crew is definitely continuing to look into as quite a few people had challenges with it in testing recently. They've designed the gameplay to try to point you toward fighting alongside your companions to even the odds. Maybe recruit enough people that you can send them in without the player even needing to participate. But it seems many people want to get in there themselves as well. So they're looking at ways to balance for both play styles. 
And I'll admit, it took me a beat to wrap my brain around this playstyle of sending my villagers ahead of me. If I get to playtest it again, then I'll definitely be doing things differently in combat. My review. So what do I think? Overall, I really like Bellright. It's kind of refreshing and intriguing. I think there are some small things that need tweaking, like details in cooking and combat, how long a torch lasts, mostly little things. It would be nice to see some stats in some areas for more clarity. There needs to be more clarity of instructions in some areas. But Donkey Crew has taken on feedback from the recent playtests and are already working on these adjustments. Honestly, I thought it was good enough to go to EA after that playtest. But apparently there were some players that had issues with some bugs and Donkey Crew took very seriously the feedback they got about things that players wanted adjusted as well as possibly some little things they wanted added. A lot of people will be asking about mounts and yes, Bellwright will have horses in the future. However, they won't be there at the launch of EA. I've been watching their comments in Discord and chatted with the community manager, and they seem committed to putting out a really high quality experience for the game's first foray into early access. They're focusing less at the moment on their vision of the game and more on keeping the feedback from the players in mind. They don't want to put out a version of the game that creates negativity, and I totally get that. So, while many people are disappointed that it didn't make it to EA by March 31st, I'd prefer to be a little disappointed that its launch is delayed a bit than to be very disappointed if people don't want to play the game because it wasn't a quality release. Chances are that they will be doing one more round of testing before it lands in EA, and I'll share any info that I can with you. I'll also be putting out guides for Bellwright. So free subscribe if you're interested in learning details and tips and tricks of the game. You can wish Bellwright on Steam right now with the link in the more section of this video. Until next time, happy gaming!